question 8.3 will lead us through learning objective number three reconciliation of absorption and variable costing operating incomes sunrise pools and spas manufactures fiberglass forms for in-ground pools and swim spas for all season use the company uses variable costing for internal management reports and absorption costing for external reports to shareholders creditors and the government the company has provided the data for the sim spa business in years one two and three as shown below and i will copy it out shortly the company's fixed manufacturing overhead per unit was constant at $2,500 for all three years. Required, number one, determine each year's absorption costing income. So we're given the variable costing operating income. We're given beginning and ending inventories for each year and the fixed cost per unit and asked to arrive at the absorption costing. So this is actually fairly straightforward. What we need is very, we have, we're given variable costing operating income for year one, year two, and year three. And in year one, we have 292.4. Year two, we have 269.2. Year three, we have 251.8. So to this, we have to add any deferred fixed overhead. Deferred fixed overhead costs. And we are told that the overhead costs are 2,500 per unit. And then we subtract any released fixed overhead and it is the same cost 2500 per unit and that will give us our absorption costing operating income so to do this all we need to know is from the beginning of the year to the ending of the to the end of the year did inventories increase or decrease. If they increased, that means we deferred some fixed overhead. If they decreased, that means we released some fixed overhead. So let's have a look at what our beginning and our ending inventories were in each year. In year one, we started at 150 and we ended at 160. In year two, we started at 180 and we ended at 150. And in year three, we started at 160 and ended at 200. For the sharp ones among you that are watching, you're probably saying that makes no sense because year one ending inventory should be year two beginning inventory, and they're not. And I have no explanation for that other than to say that it's just a question, and all it's really trying to do is, is see if you can solve this part, and it probably is just using some odd numbers just to throw some different scenarios at you in each year, so I wouldn't worry too much that these don't equal they should. So for those of you uh, who have noticed that there was a kind of a, a mismatch here, you're absolutely right, but ignore it. It doesn't change how we're solving the question. So in year one, <clears throat> did inventories increase or decrease? We started at 150, we ended at 160, we increased inventories by 10, which means we deferred costs, so we're here. We have to add 10 times 2,500. So we add 25,000 for a total of 317,400. Notice that you cannot add and subtract at the same time. Either inventories went up or they went, and in this case, they went down, but they cannot go up and down at the same time. So we're really just looking for one entry in each call. In year two, we started at 180, we ended at 150, so inventories dropped. So we released 30 units from inventory. We released fixed overhead at 2,500 per unit. So we released $75,000. And that would make our absorption costing income 194,200. In year three, we climbed 40 units. We increased by 40 units. So that means we deferred 40 units of fixed overhead in inventory at 2,500 per unit. For 100,000 and that would give us 351,800. 
Notice how the variable costing is, goes from 292 to 269 to 251. It's got a declining amount. So we can sort of look at this and say, since only sales drive operating income here, sales are declining. Whereas over here, we went from 317 down to 194 and then fully rebounded and went even higher at 351. This gives us the impression that we had a tough year, but growth is back on track when actually it really isn't. It's just that inventory went from 160 to 200. We deferred a lot of the cost into inventory. So our inventory might be, yes, overvalued. Let's see what else we have to do here. Number two, in year four, the company's variable costing operating income was 240,200. So let's do that now. Let's go to year four and let's put that number in was 240,200. And its absorption costing operating income was 205,200. So we're at 205,200 down here. So we have a bit of a, a different problem here is that we have to figure out what happened to inventory. Did inventories increase or decrease during year four? How much fixed manufacturing overhead cost was deferred or released from inventory during year four? Well, to get from 240 to 205, we have to subtract something. We have to subtract $35,000. So if we have to subtract, we're down here. Variable costing operating income plus deferred minus released. So we need a subtraction. So we're here at 35,000. So inventory went down. Inventory dropped by 35,000. Or what you could also say is you could divide that by $2,500 per unit and we get 14 units. So in year four, inventory dropped from the beginning of the year to the ending of the year by 14 units, uh, so that it allowed us to move from 240 down to 205,000 in absorption costing. Notice going from year three to year four, we also drop again. So we have a four year downward trend in variable cost operating income, which means we can say, because production is meaningless here, we can say that we have a four year downward trend in sales. That is 8.3. Okay, we're going to work on exercise 8.4, and this will cover off learning objective number four. So let's see what we have here. Evaluating absorption and variable costing as alternative costing methods. The following questions involve the same manufacturing company in two different sets of circumstances. In both, the cost structure of the company is constant from year to year. Selling prices, unit variable costs, and total fixed costs are the same in every year. However, unit sales and or unit production levels may vary from year to year. Required, number one, consider the following data for scenario A. And we can see here under three years, we have year one, year two, year three, variable costing operating income and absorption costing operating income. Notice that variable costing operating income is constant in every single year. Recall that the only thing that drives income under variable costing is revenue. So if we have flat operating income, given what the question says, that the cost structure remains the same each year, selling price and all variable costs remain the same each year, sales must be flat. So there are no sales. Well, I shouldn't say there are no sales. Sales aren't increasing or decreasing, they're just flat. And absorption costing operating income bounces around from 16 in year one up to 29 in year two, down to 6,000 in year three. And <clears throat> let's see what we're being uh, asked to do. A, were unit sales constant from year to year? Explain. Well, we've already answered that, haven't we? Of course they were constant. Variable costing operating income is constant every year. And we're told that selling price, variable cost per unit, and cost structure is constant over those three years. So that means that sales can't be increasing or decreasing. So there's one done. B, what was the relationship between unit sales and unit production levels in each year? For each year, indicate whether inventories grew or inventories shrank. All right, so that one's a little bit more challenging and we'll need some logic to get through it. So let's look at one 
B. And we'll look at year one. And you'll see that it isn't really that difficult as we go through it. In year one, variable costing and absorption costing give the same result. When that happens, what it means is that production equals sales. So in year one, we can say that production equals sales. And inventories are unchanged, unch, U-N-C-H. So there's year one. There's the relationship between production and sales. Let's go to year two. In year two, we see that absorption costing is significantly higher, which means some expenses were not charged. So they must have been deferred in inventory. And if they were deferred in inventory, then, 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 then absorption costing would have shown a higher operating income than variable costing. Now, think about that. If they were deferred in inventory, that means inventories increased, which means we made more than we sold. So in year two, production, I'm just going to sort it to production, must have been greater than sales, and inventories must have increased. Let's go to year three, and let's use some logic and work that one out. In year three, we have variable costing at 16847 but absorption costing at 6018 which means that we must have released some costs from inventory to charge in year three because more costs were charged in year three than the costs that were incurred in year three. Because keep in mind, variable costing charges all the fixed costs in every year, regardless of whether production or sales are equal. So to get from 16,000 in variable costing down to 6,000 in absorption costing, more costs would have been charged to income or to revenues. And if more costs are charged, that means we must have been releasing units from inventory, which means that production must have been less than sales because not only did we sell all that we produced, but we dragged some out of inventory. So in year three, production is less than sales, inventories decreased. So there we go. That's not so bad, is it? Let's look at the second scenario because we have another scenario. Consider the following data for scenario B. And we can see in scenario B under variable costing, um, year one, year two, year three, we go from 16,847, we go to negative 18,000, then to negative 53,000. Now, what's going on here? Well, variable costing, the only thing that drives operating income under variable costing is revenues or any change in cost structure. But the question says, sales price was constant over those three years. Variable cost per unit was constant over those three years. And our entire cost structure, the fixed cost structure, was the same over those three years. So if operating income is decreasing and everything else is the same, revenue, sales, must be decreasing as well. So we have a situation where every year, from year one to year two, sales have dropped. From year two to year three, sales have dropped. <clears throat> but look at what's going on with absorption costing. In year one, we go from 16000 and in year two, we actually increase profitability to 17000 And in year three, we increase it again to 18000 So if we looked at just that operating income trend, we would say, not bad. They keep you know consistently increasing uh, their operating profit every year. Everything seems fine. But looking at variable costing, it's not. So what's going on here? B, what was the relationship between unit sales and unit production levels in each year? For each year, indicate whether inventories grew or inventories shrank. So we're on number two, B now. And in year one, both methods give the same operating income. So we have a situation where in year one, production equals sales. Inventories are unchanged. From the beginning to the end of the year, we neither increased nor decreased inventories. Year two. Year two, variable costing shows a massive decrease in operating income, which means we have a drop in sales, but absorption costing shows an increase in profitability. So we have to rectify or reconcile uh, year two's negative 18,153 
for variable costing to 17,853, which means we're adding something. So if we defer costs into inventory, we add that deferred cost to the variable costing net income. And since we have to add something, we know that production had to be greater than sales. Why? Is because for inventories to increase, we have to make more than we sell. How do I know that inventories have increased? Because we didn't charge all the costs to income that year. Otherwise, it would have been lower. So production is greater than sales, and inventories must have increased. Let's move on to year three. Year three, we have the same situation. In fact, in variable costing, the situation's got even worse. We're losing 53,000, but under absorption costing, things, things uh, are, are looking best. It's the best year of the three years. So that means we still made more than we sold because we haven't charged all our costs against revenue. We had to, we, we took some of those costs and we deferred them in inventory. So production, again, exceeded sales for the next year which means that inventory has increased again. Now, analysts are very good at spotting this trend. So if you have, because by the way, absorption costing is what's used for external reports. If we see year one, year two, year three, a company that's increasing its, its, its operating income each year, but is also increasing its inventory in line with it, we know there's something going on. I say we because I, I analyze statements as well, but analysts know that there's something going on. That's a red flag when we see inventories increasing over a period of time. Now, the one thing that we would notice in absorption costing is we would notice that our sales, the revenue amount would be decreasing. So when you have revenues that are decreasing, operating income that is increasing, look over to inventory. If inventory is increasing, there's your culprit right there. The company is using production to defer costs in inventory, thereby making the operating income look better than the revenue amount would dictate.